So let's talk about smart lighting. There's a lot of different ways you can do smart lighting. Okay. Smart lighting can be done through lamp modules or outlet or appliance modules. Uh, they can also be done through smart light bulbs and then you can also do uh, like an in-wall switch that actually replaces your light switch with a switch that has a special radio in it. If you choose these, uh, these actually have the, enough intelligence in them to control an appliance. Um, it can control a lamp, it can control any number of things. Okay. What appliances do you have plugged into your home? What, what devices do you have oh, plugged into your home? We have lots. We have thinking my hair straightener, we have Hair straightener, TV great snacks. example yes. there. I've heard many women say that they come home and find out that it's all the time. You still plugged the in. Yep. yep, oh my gosh, did I leave that on all day? Plugging this into your outlet, and this plugs into a standard outlet, uh, plugging this into the outlet and then plugging your hair straightener into this allows you to say, when I drive away from home, turn this device off and it will automatically cut the power to the hair straightener. That's so you never perfect. worry about leaving that on. Now, mm -hmm. what are the concerns with leaving it? Why, would, why do you not want to leave your hair straightener on? Obviously, fire hazard. I keep stuff okay. on my counter along with my straightener, mm -hmm. catch on fire. So fire hazard's one. Yeah. And then also there's the, the being green, you know, having the energy uh -huh. usage, reducing the amount of energy you're, you're you know, putting out into the, into the world. So, um, or pulling from the world. So having this plugged in will help you reduce your carbon footprint as well as being able to uh, potentially so solve uh, the fire issue there. What else do you have plugged into your home? Um, I have my TV, I have different lamps. Okay, your TVs, so, uh, stereos, things like that yeah. use, some people call them vampire power, where the, even if they're plugged in and they're turned off, they're still they're connected, still they're still updates. sometimes doing updates or things like that. Right. If you didn't want it to do that, you wanted to reduce the amount of power you, you, you were using, you could plug your TV into this. Uh, the other thing that I've seen parents do is be able to plug a TV into this, especially video game systems, and when their kids refuse to come up for dinner or turn refuse to turn it off, they say, okay, I'm turning it off. And they can even create rules that say, only allow TV from this time to this time during the day. And if the kid tries to turn the TV on, it won't even turn on because it's plugged into one of these. That's it cuts the power so completely. Smart. So it's, again, it's a way of taking a device that used to be, was really originally designed for a lamp mm -hmm. um, and saying, what else can we do with this? One thing that I love in my home is using it for my router. You know, if you're Netflix is bogged down or you're trying to stream videos or you need to reboot your router, mm -hmm. most people have to go find the router in that closet, unplug it, wait for 30 seconds, plug it back in. With me, I'll either use my mobile app to go and find the router because it's plugged into one of these and just turn it off, or I'll even use voice control and say something like, Alexa, turn off the router. And voila, the router turns off. 20, 30 seconds later, I say, Alexa, turn the router on. It turns back on. It's now rebooting and doing what it needs to do. And I didn't even have to get off the couch. So convenient. Yeah, super Definitely. convenient. So a lot of different applications here. Now you'll notice this has three holes mm -hmm. and this has two holes. This bottom hole is, is called a ground. Okay, so what's the difference between the two? So the plugs that you have, you'll either get a three-prong mm -hmm. plug or a two-prong plug. Yeah. A two-prong plug is a lower voltage plug and is usually only found in lamps or really okay. small things, uh, phone chargers, things like yeah. that. So the difference is really the amount of energy this can do versus this one. This one is a lower energy one. The other difference is this is a dimmer. So if you've got a lamp, you could yeah. dim that lamp down and say, hey, I want this lamp to be at 25%, 30%, 50%, whatever, and you could choose the volume, or not the volume, but the energy okay. level on that as opposed to the outlet module, which is simply on or off. Some other ideas for outlet modules are uh, space heaters, fans. I had a space heater down in my son's uh, bedroom because he lives down in the basement and he was always forgetting to turn it off when he'd go to school. So I would come home at the end of the day and see that his space heater is still yeah. on running all day long. Right. Again, we created a rule that says at 7 a.m. you turn that space heater off. It was also a really way, good way of getting him out of bed <laughs> in the morning. Cool. Yeah, the heater turned off. I want to get out of bed quick and start moving because uh -huh. otherwise it's going to get cold in my room. That's so saving energy and, and all this. And through these smart devices, all the smart devices mm -hmm. that we have uh, plugged into our home and, and connected, we personally have seen a savings of anywhere between $30 and $40 a month in our, in our energy bills. That's huge. So really, yeah. really big savings. We, you know, we don't use a lot of energy in our home, but for me personally, our bill was right around $100 to $125 a month. Okay. Our bill is now between $60 and $80 a month. Wow. consistently and it's because we've got rules that say things like when we leave home turn off all these devices turn off the smart light bulbs turn down the thermostat do all these things mm -hmm. to save us energy when we're not there so that right there could more than cover uh, for many people the monthly monitoring cost of the system yeah so, yeah That's a good way to look at it. so the light bulbs are nice I like to use light bulbs in um, 
in places where I don't use a switch. You know, I've got some of those Z-Wave switches that replaces uh -huh. the in-wall switch. If you're going to go up and you've got the habit of going up and pressing this, the wall switch, a light bulb doesn't work as well. It still can, but more than once I tried using these in those scenarios and I walked up to the light switch and the light switch is blocked off and I said, oh, now oh, I have to no. stand there, pull my phone out, log into my app, turn it on, or do it through voice control, which is, still works for some people. But, but I've found these work really well in exterior lighting. Oh, that's smart. I always forget to turn those on. Yeah, so uh -huh. turning it on at night or turning yeah. it off in the morning, you know, again, you come home from work and realize my outdoor lights have been on all day. All right. If you've got a smart light bulb that, again, easily installed, um, you could plug that in and make a rule that says, turn on automatically at dusk, turn off automatically when it's morning time again. Or you could even program it to say, turn on when the doorbell rings. Okay, if someone walks yeah. up and rings your doorbell, the light turns on. It's a nice little way of automating okay. the home. You could um, put these in like utility closets or bedroom closets where you could say door open. Turn I needed light. one in the basement when I was little. Yeah. That was always the worst. Searching in the dark for that <laughs> yep. switch. Yeah, and you don't exactly. know where it is. Well, if you put one of these in there and then pair it with either a motion sensor that says when motion detected, turn on light. Mm -hmm. Or when door opened, turn on light. Okay. Uh, then it allows you to, you know, kind of automatically turn the light on. I have one of yeah. these downstairs in my utility room and you literally turn the light on when the door opens and when the door closes, it turns itself back off again. We're never leaving it on because it, it literally doesn't stay on. So. Is there a way to keep it on even once I close the door again? Can you set timers? Yeah, so if you, yeah, if you had a rule, let's say that you wanted to say, when door open, turn light on. Mm -hmm. So you'd have a door sensor on that door. Say, when door open, turn light on. But when door closed, it doesn't have a, a second command that turns it off. You could just say, when door open, turn light on and leave on indefinitely. And then you would ma need to manually turn that on. Or you could say, when door open, turn light on and leave on for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 okay. minutes, one so hour. just be customizing to Yeah. Needs. You customize okay. based on your needs, whether you know that you're going to go in that room. And that for me, the judge is, am I going to spend time in that room with the door closed? If I go in my utility room or my storage room, generally I'm leaving that door open because whatever it is I'm getting, I'm walking out and it's a quick trip yeah. in there. But if it's a closet, for example, where you go and get dressed, maybe you've got a large walk-in closet, you go in there and you close the door afterwards for privacy, you don't want that light to turn off again. You'd say, close door, leave light on, but leave it only on for 30 minutes because okay. you know it's within yeah. 30 minutes you'll It'll walk back out. out again or 15 cool. minutes or whatever that time level is. Okay. So smart lighting is a really great way to save energy and a really easy way to automate the home. And once you've done a few of these, customers are really wanting more after that. They'll come to you and be like, hey, I want to get another bulb. I want to get another outlet module, things like that. So it's a nice upsell. They realize how convenient. They really do.